All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're working on our Suzuki DR200 again. And if you saw the last video, you'll know that it's got low compression. Today, we're gonna fix that. After the compression test revealed leakage past the intake and the exhaust valves, pulled the head and found pretty significant damage on both valve seats. There's enough damage on the valve seats that you're not gonna be able to cut or lap them to fix it. They need to be pulled and replaced. So I got a hold of a couple places online and got a couple quotes to have these replaced. It can be about $400, but the big kicker is four to six weeks because they're pretty backed up right now. So I started doing some searching on the internet and looked on eBay. I was like, maybe there's a used head. No used heads to be found. There's some Chinese heads. So I was searching around on some forums looking for reviews of the Chinese heads and couldn't find any good, bad, or otherwise. Just didn't seem like people are using them much. I did find a poster on a forum who said that not only did he have bad valve seats in his DR200, but he bought a replacement head on eBay and the one he got also had damaged valve seats. So there may be some theme here, I don't know for sure. But what he ended up doing was using a Suzuki LT230 head. So I figured that might be worth a try. A brand new DR200 head is about $700, but that doesn't include new valves. So new valves are gonna cost you another hundred bucks. So we're talking 800 bucks for that. Getting one of these heads repaired would be $400 plus new valves, so 500 bucks. The Chinese DR200 head is about 180 bucks. This LT230 head on eBay, 150 bucks. And this one was listed as coming from a running engine, looked to be in pretty good shape, had a lot of photos, and there's a lot of them on eBay. So there's a lot of options for these. Externally, it's virtually the same as the DR200 head. The only real difference is this external compression release, which we're not gonna use. So if it works and it's cheaper, what's the catch? The combustion chamber on the LT230 head is a little bit bigger, meaning lower compression and lower performance. Also, the valves are a little smaller than the DR200. Once again, lower performance. Uh, the LT230 cams and the DR200 cams will swap. You can even put in a DRZ125 cam if you want a performance cam. The LT230 cam has more duration but less lift. Uh, the DR200 cam obviously is vice versa, has more lift and less duration, which means it should be better for torque. We're gonna use the DR200 cam. So since this is a used head, we're gonna go ahead and pull it apart. We're gonna inspect the valves, clean them up, clean up the head, make sure everything is in good serviceable condition, throw some new valve stem seals on it, and hopefully we'll have this engine running. So after disassembling the LT230 head and inspecting the valves, I found that the intake valve was worn to a knife edge, well below standard specifications and far too worn for use. So I ordered two new valves, an intake and an exhaust. So we'll go ahead and get those lapped to the seats and installed in the head. To lap the valves, all I'm doing is using a piece of vacuum hose attached to a drill bit. This allows me to get these lapped very quickly by spinning it in the head with the drill.
Okay, so we got the LT230 head installed on the DR200 here, and I've hooked up the leak down tester here just to see if we've made any progress before we get it all buttoned up. So here goes. You remember before we only had 62 out of 80. Look at that, perfect, 80 out of 80. This thing should run great. So fast forwarding a couple months, I've put about 200 miles on the bike and it runs pretty well. It's not fast by any means, but it is a DR200, so that's to be expected. If you're familiar with DR200s, you probably noticed that the carburetor I installed is not the stock Makuni. Instead, I've converted it to a Makuni VM26-606, which was the factory carburetor for a 200cc Yamaha Banshee. The previous owners of this bike did a lot of messing with the carburetor to try to figure out why it wasn't running well, so when I pulled apart the stock carburetor it was missing parts, it had unmarked jets meaning they used a non-genuine rebuild kit, and in general I'm not really a fan of CV style diaphragm carburetors, so swapping to a classic round slide Makuni seemed like a good idea. Brand new these carburetors are only about 100 bucks, and it came jetted with a 190 main and 20 pilot jet. The size 20 pilot jet was way too rich. Uh, I did some experimenting with a 17.5. Right now I've got a 15 in there and it seems to idle and come off of idle pretty well. So I think I'm going to stick with that. A couple things to note if you're planning to convert one of these to a VM26. The carburetor does not bolt in. I had to machine adapter rings for both the inlet and outlet side of the carburetor. You'll need a different throttle cable and twist throttle. Uh, both of these are from Motion Pro and therefore Yamaha Banshee 200, like the carburetor. All in all, this was a pretty simple project and we got this bike back on the road with only a few hundred dollars spent. And this should be a pretty fun bike to run around town, back roads like this, and even some gravel and maybe some light trails. So if you found this video interesting or informative, consider subscribing to see more content. And please hit that like button and share with your friends. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.